America's gun ownership rate used to be a lot higher than it is today. Yet deadly school shootings are mostly a recent phenomenon. What has changed? Could it be our overall culture has undergone a toxic shift? Hello, my name is Alex Nickel from the YouTube channel Technicality, and this is my argument against the claim that violent video games cause mass shootings. On February 14th, 2018, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School suffered a mass shooting, which killed 17 people and injured 17 more. A discussion was had in hopes of finding a way to make mass shootings occur less frequently. Some proposed that the problem at hand was violent media, or more specifically, violent video games. I've heard a lot of people talk about the desensitization to killing, and, and I firmly believe that that's a root cause. I look to my own life. I was desensitized to killing on the battlefield. And I know how not glorious that is, but that's not what people get out of seeing a John Wick movie. That's not what people get out of playing Call of Duty. I'm hearing more and more people say the level of violence on video games is really shaping young people's thoughts. Something culturally has changed, and I would submit that we have become significantly desensitized to death into violence. The argument being made here is violent video games cause mass shootings. The start of this debate, at least in the legal sense, is in 1993 when Senators Joseph Lieberman and Herbert Kohl expressed concern for the issue, and the ESRB, the video game rating system, was formed. This is ultimately a psychological argument. The idea is that a violent piece of media will cause a person to operate in a more violent matter and commit a violent crime as a result. So, needless to say, if this argument is true, it wouldn't matter where the video game is being played. And thus, since video games are played all over the world, you would expect to see a pattern of gun violence all over the world. Japan, for example, spends the most on video games per person, clocking in at $120 per person. But in 2014, there were just six gun deaths in Japan, or 0.0047 deaths per 100,000 people. Compare this to the US, where in the same year, an average of $74 per person was spent on video games, yet 33,599 gun deaths occurred, or 10.5 gun deaths per 100,000 people. If video games desensitize people to violence and cause mass shootings, why are there far fewer gun deaths in Japan, a country that spends so much more on video games than in America. Conversely, we should find that the most dangerous places on Earth, the places with the most gun deaths, should have a higher amount of video game sales. Honduras has the most gun deaths per 100,000 people out of any country, clocking in at 60, and they've outright banned violent video games. The same goes for the country with the second highest rate of gun deaths per 100,000 people, Venezuela, with 59.13 gun deaths per 100,000 people. Matter of fact, possession of violent video games in Venezuela results in a fine and three to five years in prison. That being said, there's also a large amount of evidence supporting the claim that violent video games do not cause mass shootings. First, violent video games do not increase violence. This 2005 study of 213 participants involved the experimental group playing a violent MMORPG, or massively multiplayer online role-playing game. The findings of the study, quote, did not support the assertion that a violent game will cause substantial increases in real-world aggression. Furthermore, this 2012 study of 6,567 eighth graders found that when you control for other factors, violent video games show no significant negative effect in males and fewer and weaker effects in females. This three-year study of 165 kids found that violent video games did not have any negative outcomes, and that bigger contributors are usually outside factors, such as, quote, depression, antisocial personality traits, exposure to family violence, and peer influence. Here's Patrick Markey, who has a PhD in psychology and is a professor of psychology at Villanova, saying so. We know that violent video games are linked to increases in hostility and so forth, but there's really no evidence to suggest that such violent media is linked to these uh, shootings or really any real-world violence, that what we find in our laboratory studies are very small effects affecting our thoughts, our cognitions but not so much affecting our actual real behaviors. Second, video games do not decrease pro-social behavior. This 2013 study, which measured how helpful participants would be in picking up spilled pens after playing a violent or non-violent video game, concluded, quote, we failed to find evidence that playing video games affects pro-social behavior. And finally, third, if for some reason the evidence presented isn't adequate, here's 10 more studies that show violent video games cause no harmful effects. Moreover, if violent video games cause mass shootings, a large portion of the people who commit mass shootings should also be video game players. However, only 14% of mass shooters expressed an interest in video games. Before we end, this is Dave Grossman. He's a retired United States Army Lieutenant Colonel, a massive anti-video game advocate, and the author of Assassination Generation, Video Games, Aggression, and the Psychology of Killing. On February 19th, 2018, he went on Tucker Carlson Tonight. What is the social science well, on it? What the is the evidence? The AMA, the APA, the American Academy of Pediatrics, Surgeon General after Surgeon General have made definitive statements. What Lieutenant Colonel Grossman means by that is they have all came out and said video games cause violence. But have they?
This statement from the American Psychological Association has the headline, APA Review Confirms Link Between Playing Violent Video Games and Aggression. This would appear to support his argument until you read the very next line, finds insufficient research to link violent video game play to criminal violence. The organization he cited disagrees with his argument. With the matter came before the Supreme Court, California law to regulate children's access to violent video games, the video game industry found 82 journalism professors, now think about it, 82 media studies professors who told the Supreme Court there is no scientific proof. It was academic malfeasance at the highest level. Our entire medical community screaming from the mountainside. I can't yes, imagine it's anybody there. I'd less rather take advice from than journalism professor. I can't imagine a dumber group of people. Amen. Actually. Amen. It's unbelievable. Let's take a look at that Supreme Court case Lieutenant Colonel Grossman is referencing. California wanted to ban violent video games. They were taken to court, the Supreme Court to be exact. Seven out of the nine judges, a vast majority, ruled that it was unconstitutional. And in the process, Justice Antonin Scalia, who wrote the majority opinion, stated that the evidence presented did not, quote, prove that violent video games caused minors to act aggressively. Additionally, journalism professors should not be ignored on the basis that they are journalism professors. That is an ad hominem attack, which is a logical fallacy. And Grossman follows this up with another fallacy, citing anecdotal evidence. Please look at this. It was uh, 2002, an identical crime happened in Germany. 19 year old high school dropout in Erfurt, Germany, murdered 17 people at school. Identical crime, Germany, 2002. Mm. It's not about the guns. Germany can't stop it. We saw this weekend a massacre in a church in Russia. Mm. Russia's a totalitarian nation that's tried to confiscate every gun for a century, and they can't stop evil people from getting guns. The most horrific juvenile mass murder in history, a 70-year-old kid in 2009 in Bidden in Germany murdered 15 people. Germany can't stop it. Russia can't stop it. It's right. not about taking away rights. Well, it's I noticed that. It's about giving that. people more rights. Hopefully, you'll find those cherry-picked examples less convincing than the actual data. Even though Germany spends $50 per person on video games, about a third of what America spends per person, 1.01 out of 100,000 people die from firearms, over 10 times less than America. Russia spends about $8 per person on video games, and while deaths by firearm couldn't be found, Russia does have a bit over 10 deaths by homicide per 100,000 people. Of course, you could find one or two examples of gun violence in other countries, however, overall data shows no correlation between violent video games and gun violence. Let's move on to another interview. On November 22, 2016, Lieutenant Colonel Grossman went on the Fox News show Health Talk to discuss the same argument. Some of the points he makes in this interview are the same as the last video, so those will be skipped, but nothing is taken out of context, and the links to the full videos and sources will be in the description below. When I began to become aware of how we teach soldiers in Copsicle, how, how we have to condition them right. to be able to pull the trigger, to overcome the resistance, we realize that video games are doing the same things to the kids. Right. Co-chair of psychology at Stetson University, Christopher Ferguson, was dubious of the claim that video games are much like how we teach the military to kill, so he decided to look into it and found that it's incredibly misleading at best and straight up wrong at worst. He interviewed a military psychologist and learned, quote, the military wants professional soldiers who think and solve problems rationally, not vigilantes who go shooting wildly at everything that moves. He noted that the military does use video game-like simulators, although these typically aren't games like Doom, for such skills as decision-making and team performance, but not for desensitization to violence. That quote was from the book Moral Combat, Why the War on Violent Video Games is Wrong, of which Ferguson is the co-author of, along with psychologist Patrick Markey, who, as you might remember, we saw earlier. It's a great read for anyone who's interested in learning about this topic further. The American Academy of Pediatrics says media violence is the most remediable factor. It's the one that if we did something about it would have the greatest impact on violence in our society. Research has found that on average, video games contribute to only 0.4 to 3.2% of variation in minor aggression in a person. So even if video game violence is the most remedial, the most changeable factor, we'd only see at most a decrease in aggression of 3.2%. In a 60-minute uh, uh, Vanity Fair poll, 84% uh, 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 of the population believes right. that, that this is having an impact. Right. I mean, it's, it's just a no-brainer. Just because the public thinks something is true, that doesn't mean it is. Now that it's been proven violent video games do not cause violence, it's beneficial to ask why is it that violent video games do not cause violent behavior? Violent video games trigger a fight or flight response since their active competitive nature causes your brain to release adrenaline. Because you don't flight, that would make for a very boring game. All right, dude, he's just over that hill. He's all yours, go get him. Okay, but counter proposal. What do you mean? What counter, what, what, what are you doing? Why are you? 
you why are you running backwards? I've got to avoid him. No, you have to fight him. You go into fight mode, becoming temporarily more aggressive. So yes, while playing the game, video games do cause you to act more hostile, but is that really because of the violence in the game? This study from Brock University in Canada finds that it's actually the competitive aspect of video games and not the violent aspect that triggers this fight or flight response. Likewise, frustration is also a factor. Dr. Andrew Pizabilski, an Oxford psychologist, finds in this 2014 study that when you control for how frustrating a game is by studying violent video games and non-violent video games with the same level of frustration, no difference in aggression is observed. Ooh, hey, before we go, I'm gonna plug my channel real quick. Uh, I run the YouTube channel Technicality, and I make videos about science, humanities, and really everything I find interesting. I just released a video today, if you wanna go check that out. It's also a counter-argument to the idea of agriculture, so I think it's pretty interesting. I'll put a link to it down in the description below and to my channel, and uh, if you like this and wanna see more of me, it would mean a lot if you checked out my channel. Thanks. This <laughs> あと? これはスミレですかはあ